Did how do you even make friends as an adult? Are, are we adults? We'll fact check that later. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. I am Amy and I am here with Rachel, and we are talking about being as adults, adults as friends. Friends as adults. Oh my god, we're what a great start we're off to. <laughs> we could try and be adults as friends, but I don't know how it would work out. We're we're working on the adulting and the friending, I think. <laughs> Anywho, we are running this chaos train uh, by randomly pulling interesting things out of a jar. Um, if you have an answer to one of these questions, drop it in the comments below. If you're on YouTube, if you are um, joining us via the podcast, shoot us an email. I'll put it in the show notes and let us know what your answers are. We want to hear from you too. If you have something that you want to ask us or you want us to talk about um, that you think might be interesting, let us know that as well. Um, I think without further ado, let's shake the jar. <laughs> no pressure no big deal it's no big deal though or or is it a big deal (laughs) favorite tv person david schitt's greek oh that's a good one i mean how how do you beat that he's funny like like that that razor humor like I can't get enough of it like just the audacity of like the behavior I loved his story arc like starting as you know like, like what was the thing with like the face cream from France like the oh my gosh the credit card company paid for it like the yes. story arc to him like running his own business really becoming like lodged in, like I love I cannot get enough of that no, that's true. And if I have one more person, try and center my entire personality around Stevie. Oh, <laughs> you do give Stevie vibes. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, so I was going to say Mr. Rogers. So we'll just. <laughs> I mean, okay, but like seriously, Mr. Rogers was like a staple growing up. Like, did you hear the yeah. story about the fish? Did you ever hear the story about the fish? Yes. Oh, okay. In case you. Listen yes, to I was gonna say catch, the fish. catch the people up. There, there was um a blind child who sent Mr. Rogers a letter saying that she was worried about his fish, um that they were not being fed because she couldn't see him feeding them. And so, from like the day he received the letter on, he would announce and feeding the fish specifically so that she would know. Like you cannot make a better human than that. I feel like it's not even fair to compare. Like he's not a TV character. He was just Mr. Rogers it's and like, put him on TV so we could all go visit him. It's true. And mm-hmm. I kind of feel a little bit like David would be somebody that Mr. Rogers like had over to have lemonade in the backyard and have a conversation with yes. if the two were still yeah. here at the same time. I'm not going to lie to you. I would watch that as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch the regular Mr. Rogers as an Fair. adult. Fair. <laughs> okay, now before I cry about Mr. Rogers, I'm going to move on. <clears throat> what sound or noise do you hate, aside from all the people that are going to write in and be like, why are you always clearing your throat? <laughs> because I just downed my afternoon coffee and protein drink. Um, sound you hate. I cannot stand the sound of people chewing. Like if I can hear what your mouth is doing, like you are like, like, no, that's like, no. And like, I know some people who like, they chew things and I'm like, I didn't even know that that kind of food could make a sound. Like, how are you making a sound out of that? (laughs) That's true. No, abort mission. That's true. Um, I don't know. On any given day, I'm like over input. And so like <clears throat> literally just ex- silently existing next to me could bother me depending on what kind of day I'm having. Um, I've only heard this maybe like three or four times in my life, but you know that just like um, completely unfiltered like sound people make when they've either come across something that's like a legit emergency or like they just got that kind of news um I can remember being in the car once and we were 
um, with a realtor and she got a phone call from her daughter and it was very upsetting news about one of her grandchildren. And I just remember that sound coming out of her and like and being like 23 in the back seat and like, I don't know what to do in this situation. And so that kind of like puts me on edge. Plus as a parent um, with a kid with food allergies, we've been with like people who have had legitimate emergencies like that. And um, that like just... Yeah, you would not like hanging out with me then, especially when I'm on TikTok. That noise comes very liberally <laughs> out of my body and scares my partner to death. All, like I'm watching something on TikTok and some kid does like a face plan and I'm like, <gasps> and he's like, what, what? And I'm like, oh, never mind. Sorry. It's it's no big deal. Deal. He's fine. His <laughs> mom kept recording and didn't stop. He must be okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But like, yeah, it, it happens too often like and it doesn't yes. feel nice for me either like I get the thing you know when you get that scared feeling and like just your nervous system turns into pain yes. needles it takes me hours to get rid of that feeling so like no one is enjoying the situation right <laughs> right it wasn't good for anyone thank you <laughs> for the situation um best and worst advice or a piece of advice you would like to give people. Don't chew near me. Um, be That's mindful of what TikTok videos you send to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Oh, that's a good one. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got like the bad one, like right off. <laughs> like that of course you shockingly do. quickly. Well, we've probably like, all got ter gotten terrible advice. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. Oh, I would say like, I would say worst piece of advice I ever got. So like, I like grew up with learning disabilities. I was illiterate until grade four and we moved so often that no one knew, like they just thought I was really shy. Um, and so when it came out that I have all of these like developmental sort of disabilities that were the reason that that was not happening for me, um, someone pulled me aside, like a trusted adult and was like, Hey honey, like set the bar low because kids like you don't go anywhere. So like set reasonable expectations. So you don't get hurt. <laughs> and as an adult, I'm like, Ooh, I will throat punch you. <laughs> but as a kid, I was like, wow, that's so like, that's so reasonable. Like that makes total sense that you don't want my feelings to get hurt because I can't accomplish what other people can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think the best piece of advice came from my mother-in-law shocker um I was trying to like it was before I had done my coaching training I was really like I feel like I'm in a place where I need to go forward but I don't know where forward is um and she pulled me aside and was like I think you could be a doctor do you want to be a doctor like she works in the medical field like she's a she's an anatomist she teaches all the doctors like what's inside the body and she was like I know you and I think you'd make an amazing doctor um and I was like well I think the insides of bodies are ill so I will not be being a doctor um but thanks for thanks for sort of that boost of confidence and she said in that case like you can be whatever you want um and I sort of like took that with like gonna be an astronaut I'm gonna be like a mermaid I'm gonna be like... <laughs> but it started a really fun trajectory for me where I got into coaching and she was 100% um on board with that and then I like announced one day like I want to get a PhD and she's like 100% on board with that so that just the just juxtaposition of those two pieces of advice both from trusted adults um is very interesting that they both knew me inside and out and one person was like oh like you're a dad you're the first pancake <laughs> and somebody right. else was like you are like the whole crepe cake <sighs> it's fine that's so why I'm never gonna be an adult they suck <laughs> but but I will really not be though. the trusted adult <laughs> I don't care for that hmm. um I think the worst advice that I've gotten and I could, and we could probably both list innumerable pieces of shit advice. Um, but I think some of the worst advice I ever got was as a new uh, military spouse. And um, <clears throat> I'm not blaming the entirety of the like church community for this, but I will tell you that this advice kind of really um, run super parallel and very, very close to a lot of crappy church wife advice that I've gotten. 
um, that I should have all disregarded all of it. Um, but when you're like 20 and married, 24 year olds are very, very adults and know what they're talking about in your life. And you should call them Mr. And Mrs. So like, um, or, or doctor or whatever, you want, whatever, or a, a gender neutral term for that situation. But like, um, I was told very early on, essentially not to tell my husband anything that was going on at home that could be in the least bit upsetting, obviously, because we want their head in the game. And he flew, you know, multi-million dollar aircraft and um, on and off of boats. So like, that's not a safe, <laughs> necessarily safe situation all the time. And um, while I agree with having tact in timing and like knowing what's going on and understanding your partner's mental space and kind of where they're at and their deployment and how they're feeling, um, that has very much ruined massive spaces of our marriage because he just doesn't know all of the things that I went through. And of course, telling in hindsight is very different than telling in the moment. Mm -hmm. And even telling in the moment would have still been completely removed because he wasn't at home. And so every once in a while, I'll say something to him either about, you know, dealing with my son when he was very ill and we didn't know what was going on growing up or whatever. And he would be like, I never knew that. And I'd be like, I don't know why you don't. Oh, I didn't. Um, but also he didn't ask. So I would say like, he could have stood to be told, do ask your wife, like what's going on. Um, the best I've gotten, like at least two, probably three, like really solid, good pieces of advice. Um, one came from my golf coach in high school, uh, I walked around the back of the bus and he was standing outside the bus smoking. And if you smoke, I have, I have no feelings for you, about that for you. You can do what you want with your own body. Um, but <clears throat> at the time that was very much associated with my biological father, who I have no, now he's dead, but like I had no relationship with as soon as I could possibly decide for myself not to have a relationship with him. And that just very much like struck a similarity of like what that would mean about a person and I remember being like oh my gosh you're smart I like burst into tears right because this is like mentor in my life I love him dearly um if I didn't have my stepfather as my as my real dad this person would have been like next in line to kind of like fill that space and he said to me you know, Rachel, you really got to take people off pedestals and just realize like everybody's just a person. And I'm not telling you to lower your standards, but I am telling you, you're going to need to lower your expectations or you're going to be very like unhappy. And as a person who still has inappropriate expectations for myself and the people around me, who's <laughs> haven't learned my lesson yet 32 years later, but you know, I'm working on it. Um, not 30, not 32. That's, that's just me not being good at math. Want me to edit um, that out? <laughs> 22 years later, I know how to add. It's fine. Um, and then when my husband and I were engaged the Christmas right before we got married, which was like two weeks before we got married, we were at my grandparents' house and I was like waiting on him hand and foot. And my grandmother pulled me into the kitchen and she was like, I see you get up and get that boy one more thing. His body is physically capable of getting him himself. I'm going to make you leave. <laughs> like, No, she was like, you do not do one time in your relationship with this boy, what you don't want to be doing until one of you graciously dies. <laughs> like, or ungraciously no, dies. Or ungraciously <laughs> Um, and she was totally right um, because also I didn't listen to that. And that really came around to, to bite me in the ass. I'm kind of alert on my own gal. Um, and then, oh, there was one other that like struck me, but if it comes back, it, but those were the two things like don't do for your partner one time in a, in a way that kind of lets them think 
this is the norm. I never have to do this task again, which is absolutely the like 20 year old contemporary Christian wife energy I was giving off because then it took me like 14 years to train out of him doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, so just do that. Like, so just pay attention to that one. Um, (laughs) I just have the word candy written on the piece of paper, which I could go on about forever. This is why we're friends. Did we just become friends? (laughs) I think we did. (laughs) Candy. I love candy so much. (laughs) What is the cornerstone of your relationship? Candy. (laughs) Which is still more solid than a lot of people's relationships are built on. Right. Um, so are you like, are you like a sweet only or are you a sweet and savory? Ooh, um, so that's a very interesting question (laughs) because definitely the week before my cycle, I, you will only see me eating popcorn and a candy or like potato chips and a candy absolutely together. Um, and I generally would prefer the two together. Um, but not necessarily in the same situation. Um, it's very odd because for a long time in my life, I would have said that I was a sweets person, like that I'm a sugar person in general, but I'm actually realizing now as an adult who's more mindful about what I genuinely enjoy and pulling those things into my life I'm kind of realizing I'm more of a savory person so Mm. you will often see me after dinner the rest of my family will have a dessert and I'll like have chips or I I love popcorn even though my body only will take that so many days in a row before it's like yeah absolutely not um but I think I've mentioned before in high school, like absolutely, I would have ordered a mozzarella stick for dessert or, um, you know, something like that. So yeah, but I de- I also okay. So you say which which things are you? So I'm like yeah. split down the middle <clears throat> for savory and sweet. Like I also think it's tied to my cycle, but I don't have a period anymore, and so. <laughs> So you're just guessing. Chemically, chemically, I don't know when my period is anymore. And so like, I noticed that there is like a week where I'm like super irritable, maybe. (laughs) And like also very into chocolate, maybe. Um, And then it just kind of like peters out. And I'm like, where, what was that? (laughs) It's just clean on the wind. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I would say definitely I get sweeter, I think around that time of the Mm -hmm. month. We don't, it's between me and the Lord. (laughs) Right. Between my uterus and the Lord, they don't share anything with me. Um. (laughs) And then the rest of the time, I'm a little bit more savory Mm -hmm. um, or I like like more of like a granola with maybe like a bit of chocolate in it or I like really like peanut butter things or get really into coconut. I would say like candy wise, if I got like stuck on a desert island and had to like have a candy with me, I really like fuzzy peaches. I don't know what it is. I think it's the sweet and savory because they're a little bit sour. Like, yeah, I think that's the one. I think that's the one. And if we're going to go chocolate, I don't know how this happened I really like like raisinets or glossettes with mm-hmm. like the chocolate covered raisins everyone's like you're weird you're weird I don't like raisins I do like raisinets so I don't know how that wire got crossed in my body but I'm not sad where did the confusion come from yeah I hmm. so generally speaking I am not a chocolate person So if I'm going to have chocolate, it's going to have to be with something else. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you force me to eat cake, as in that's the only choice, then my my choice would generally be chocolate only Mm -hmm. because if you set a piece of dry cake down in front of me, absolutely not. So, um, but, so I definitely like gummy fruity things more. Mm -hmm. I I'm kind of an old person with my candy. Um, So first of all, if I could choose any candy, it would be a Twizzler, which I can't eat Mm. because they're wheat-based. Yeah. The jerks. And so, but um, I like 
like chuckles they're like in a they're in a they're like old school candy so they're in this cellophane container with like a little paper tray behind them and there's like a lime one and an orange one and a yellow one they're kind of like fruit slices Mm -hmm. like if you've ever had fruit slices so I really and I like fruit slices but I I really really like spice drops okay you are speaking American to me so so. (laughs) they're they're essentially gumdrops but instead of being fruit flavored they're different spice flavored so there's like clove and wintergreen and peppermint and like a spicy cinnamon orange one and like (laughs) and like a licorice one so it's I'll have to send you a bag for you to be like no why are you eating I'll try them on the podcast and it'll just be like me choking and spitting them out (laughs) it's probably true I love you so much (laughs) see also like like the uh, the brand Brock's also makes like reg- like a, a jelly bean for days. Give me a jelly bean, but they also make like a spice dropped jelly bean. So there are all those flavors. Um, a Mike and Ike, yes. I don't um, think we have those here. I know what they are, but I don't think I've ever had them. I also like Good and Plenty's, which are black licorice with like a candy shell. Um, I'm really like it's not good, guys. <laughs> it's really- y'all oh no that did not just come out of my mouth we'll be editing y'all out I don't y'all um that's a lie all, um because I am from north of Mason Dixon you got it from me I y'all all the time it, you do because you me. have you have people who y'all near you I picked it up from Texas it's really unacceptable um But I mean, I could really go on about candy forever. However, a lot of candy is not safe for my son. And Mm. so I really like, um, before we knew that he had food allergies, absolutely a peanut butter thing. Every time I've ingested so much peanut butter, I think everybody and God was just like, you know what? I think it's, it's time to be done with that. So, um, but they make sun butter cups. So sunflower seed butter with chocolate. I love those. I'll eat those all the time. Um, but there's a company called surf sweets and my body only likes a certain amount of high fructose corn syrup, which I will eat, but like, I can only tolerate. Yeah. So, so many times of that. Be rough if you have GI symptoms. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And so, <laughs> um, but uh, I like their jelly beans and gummy worms and um, not their gummy bears as much, but their gummy worms okay. because they don't have any high fructose corn syrup and they're a company whose facilities are free of lots of allergens. So I also know it's safe for me. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, if there is candy, I will likely suffer through it. Um, I I love a junior man. Again, old person, a a peppermint thing, an Andy's candy, an after eight mint, like a a peppermint patty. Yes. Um, I also like coconut, so a mounds bar. Like sometimes oh, that'll be the thing. bars where oh. you live. Um, we don't, but I know what they are because we have had people bring them over the border for me before. <laughs> Maybe we just need to do a candy exchange. <laughs> we'll do it like we're trading hostages. Bonus episode. <laughs> Amy and Rachel just eating. But with me muted because I do not want Amy to hear me. Too. Thank you. Much appreciated. We should. We should trade care packages and just try them in front of each other. I we feel like should. That would be a funny bonus episode. That would just be, I mean, excuse me, that would also just be hilarious for the two of us if, if nobody else participates. Yeah, we're going to do it ourselves, but you're invited if you want to come. It's true. I think so. I think yeah, so. I have, to, I have to get you ketchup chips to try. So we have actually had them in our home before and I could not bring myself to do it. So didn't even try them. They're super savory. They don't taste like ketchup. If that's helpful. Hummus? I don't know why they call them that. Okay. And I can probably figure it out, but like they don't taste how you think they're going to taste. Okay. They're because to like they're closer to like a salt and vinegar is more what that tastes like. Okay. 
All right. I'll send you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'll send you a tiny bit. Um, if they're safe for my son, send me a whole one because I'll never get any. If he, he doesn't, it literally doesn't matter what it is. As long as it, he won't eat sun butter because he thinks it smells and tastes and whatever too close, which is hilarious because he's literally never had peanut butter in his body before. But at any rate, um, I think that would be, we have to do that. That would be hilarious. Okay. Please, please don't send anything with gluten because I'll just cry. It'll just be a podcast. If you I will try so hard. <laughs> um, this one says song. So this is literally impossible for me. There is not a way for me to pick a singular you song. Put it in the jar. <laughs> Probably me. Because I'm an idiot. Um, there's not a physical way possible because I relate all points of my life with different music. So Mm -hmm. like, that's not, that's not going to happen. Um, but I'm kind of currently obsessed with like Irish music. Mm -hmm. And so there are a couple a couple like singles of things that I like from that. And also, um, I mean, yeah, there, I could name a thousand songs or none. There's no way. I'm trying to think of like a song I hate. So I could be I like, oh, well, song what I song hate. do I not like at all? I but the one. no, like if you were to say to me, what was your favorite song from this particular point in your life that I could do? What was your favorite like high school anthem when you were graduating? Oh man. It's not going to get more specific than that. (laughs) My high school boyfriend who I had been with like for a long time as a, as that aged person <clears throat> our song was Richard Marks um right here waiting and we broke up like a m- half a second before my high school graduation and so I definitely had a lot of just like sob to that situation um and then I like hardcore was like hardcore um Dixie Chicks, like, uh, oh, what was the song like? Uh, whatever the song was about, oh, like a cold day in July or whatever about some like, de- like definitely, I was like hardcore, like feeling that particular thing. It's funny, in the my my favorite Dixie Chicks song was the like Murdering Earl song. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's a classic. That's a classic. There's another uh, personalities that you're all like, this is so meaningful. And I'm like, yeah, murder people. <laughs> Goodbye, Earl. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, for sure, for sure, offing, offing a man at the time. Um, but that was also right around that kind of like freshman year of college. And, and maybe one of my top I was going to give it top five. That's probably true, but I'll give it top 10, like forever and ever. My anthem, like life anthem at the time was um, Garth Brooks um, standing outside the fire. And that is still mm-hmm. like, it will be on every play car playlist from now until I die. Yeah. See, I got screwed for like graduation anthems because when I graduated grade eight, Vitamin C's graduation song came out. And of course that was our graduation anthem. And then when I graduated high school, it was the like wear sunscreen, whatever that was. So can I tell you that that was the song the year I graduated from high school? And when you said to me that, I was like, oh no, that was the, th- and now I remember that that was the thing right then. <laughs> yeah. But what's really funny is I'll, I'll allow that because that's like, 
that's the four year gap that's essentially here. But what I do like to do is remind my husband that he graduated from college the year before I graduated from high school. So he'll be like, oh my gosh, that was like junior year of college. I'll be like, oh my gosh, that was seventh grade. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So like my husband and I have a similar age gap and if we had we don't have grade 13 here anymore mm -hmm. I was the first year that went through with no grade 13 so I was in grade nine with grade 13s but they were gone the next year um, unless they were going to do like the victory lap and so our timetables are off all the time because he's talking about being in university in his first year he was like a certain age but I also went to school a year early so like he's like oh like well when I went to university and I was 19 and whatever whatever and we were doing all these drinking things because he's in the theater program because he's a lighting designer so he's like oh like we were going into this bar and we were doing this and we were doing that and I was like I was not the legal drinking age until year three <laughs> halfway through year three <laughs> right. oh my right. god like and we had like of course there's like all the like like I was in a class with adults, like they were making adult jokes and I got really close to one of my professors. He's awesome. We're still friends. Um, and he didn't realize how young I was and he had been making like some adult level jokes. And then we were all going out and he was like, oh, like, let's go to the bar and whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't go. And he was like, oh, why not? I was like, I'm 17. And he was like, oh my God, <laughs> no, <laughs> oh no. I was like, how old did you think I was? He was like, at least 22. <laughs> We were making it like, like he was like I was using you as the base range and I was not right. <laughs> mm. Nope. Sorry. Yes, and I'm I'm the year older because my mom kept me home for an extra year. I mean, my birthday is mid-November, so I'm kind of it's not like I turned that at the beginning, yeah. but I kept my oldest home for an extra year. So he turns the year for the next year on sep in September mm -hmm. so like he literally gets to school and like people are like I oh, whatever and he's like me too and they're like <laughs> and so um yes but I had very similar circumstances because when I got married of course I couldn't drink so mm -hmm. I can remember like dating my husband and being in San Diego visiting him while he was in um training and going out with friends and just time getting away from us and then like going to every restaurant and then being like you you can't come in <laughs> and us like desperately trying to find a place that I could eat at and my mm -hmm. husband's like she's not even going to eat like we were trying to go to this steak place and he's like she's not even going to eat red meat let alone <laughs> like yeah He's like, she's not going. But then also being the spouses club president for his squadron and having to like do events and then not being able to get into the event because it was at some place where I wasn't allowed in and the skipper having to come and be like, you have to let her. She's actually, she is the one who wrote you the check. So <laughs> if you would like to let her in. <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying to think oh of my like, word. I, I'm the same where like I can't pick a favorite song just because like, no. I did grow up very much under the rock of God um we're like <laughs> so none of those I only knew songs that had Jesus as the like the headliner um I have like been indoctrinated all of my friends send me lists of all the songs they're listening to like discovering Madonna was awesome um but I would say like favorite song like I was in a professional children's choir from like 11 to 17 spent a lot of years there um and when we started to get like really big and like we were like winning tons of competitions like it was awesome um we started to commission pieces which was really fun and there was one this is gonna be weird <laughs> brace yourself there was one where it was the smallest our choir ever was we were 40 people mm -hmm. um and we were like on it because it was like the best of the best that year everybody was kind of older um and it was really awesome and we had this piece commissioned that we were a beehive there were no notes there was no singing it was just people humming and different like and it was and then like the beehive started tiny and it would grow and buzz and then apparently there's like a bug apocalypse because it stops suddenly but the fun part the fun part was that a couple of us got to be like animals 
And we always perform in the same, um, it's called the Living Arts Center. It's in Mississauga for anybody who's living in Ontario. Um, and it had this like two story. So like without saying a word, like he'd just be like, okay, it's the B song, like go. 10 of us would just leave the choir and go up into the second story and just stand around. And we were at like a competition level where he didn't have to direct us. He just sort of like sat back and was like, well, B. <laughs> and I got to play a chipmunk. No, you didn't. <laughs> I was a chicken we had loons we had a wolf like and everybody just knew when they were supposed to go he would just like go and sit and be like oh like good job everybody yeah I was a chipmunk that is the most fun and I will not make you try and give us a miniature performance of what occurred I don't know that I could be a beehive and a chipmunk (laughs) well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you you should (laughs) this is the level you should be at but I don't even know if I can make the sound and like it was a really specific sound like we all had to like compete to be like who got to be which animal and he's like who wants to be a chipmunk make your chipmunk noise and I did it and he's like competition over Amy's chipmunk (laughs) everybody else sit down right he's like we're done here (laughs) yeah that's fabulous so I kind of feel like we've had this really fun, like not at all heavy situation today. So in that in that um, theme, um, what have we attached morality to that doesn't carry? <laughs> oh, okay. Everything. Very everything. Like, everything. Fun. Yeah. I, Body I size, like, food, exercise. Wor- yes, words. Um, like amount of sleep. We're too much is not good <laughs> like, right we're, we're only doing sleep deprivation here um <laughs> exercise like the kind of exercise you do where like some of them are very like purist and like oh like check us out and others are very like oh like what are those people doing like yep and that is the crossfit side of that spectrum where people are like i don't get it why do you want to throw up nobody wants to throw up <laughs> like that's right. an accident like just to be clear it's an accident like yeah, never right. actually had that happen in a class I've wanted to but we've never had that happen <laughs> like, also though like I've had that happen on my long runs for marathon training so right? I'm not real sure <laughs> me too <laughs> like I mean, it's just your body being like you you wiggled me too much <laughs> like, right. there was too much wiggle wiggle why um yeah. excuse me while I blow my nose um you know, one particular word, and I think you and I have had this conversation before, but one particular word that I feel like has morality attached to it that doesn't actually carry any, aside from that no words actually carry, like, morality, um, is the word judgment. Oh, mm, yes. Um, because... I mean, part of our job is to kind of like judge people, right? Like we might hate to be like, so I'm just ju- judge you're judging you. Um, but I mean that that's le- that's legitimately what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, but the the space that goes from having a judgment, right, to I think the morality space is like then what do I believe about this person based Mm -hmm. on my judgment? Whereas like, normally when I have a judgment, that doesn't carry any weight for what I think about who the person is, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think there's that. Um, Well, I think it's, I think it's sort of looking at judgment in the literal sense of like discernment. Correct. Like I'm looking at something and I'm judging it safe or unsafe for my body or for someone else's body. Which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Like I'm judging something as appropriate or inappropriate as effective or more effective or less effective. Like judgment really is a neutral term. Um, It's that we're weaponizing it sort of against other people where it gets that sort of morality kind of mm-hmm. feeling if that makes sense mm-hmm. but yeah like you're absolutely right people pay us to judge <laughs> like right. that's why they're coming like I need you to discern what is helpful to me and what is not helpful to me as like sort of a non-biased third party right um so yeah I think that it's a really important conversation to have and I've tried to have that conversation with my community um mm-hmm. as well just because we do we do think of it very negatively and we need people to be able to judge um and I think that this might be a controversial opinion but I think that going through all these things like headspace and meditation apps and things like that where they're like you need to let go of judgment you need to let go of like it becomes just noticing you're not letting go of judgment you're letting go of morality and you're using judgment to notice 
right? right? Like I'm judging things as a thought. I'm judging things as an emotion. Like you have to make a decision about them in order to label them, to let them go, whatever, whatever. I think sort of having people be preoccupied with you need to let go of judgment. You need to let go of judgment when people are making judgment based decisions, which they're supposed to be making. Now they're bad or they're wrong or they're not doing something right or they have more work to do um, when they're really doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. Cause you're not releasing the judgment. You're releasing the belief system that comes yeah. off of that judgment. Exactly. Like this happened or this thought has come up. That's not the judgment The you know, mm. the part that we deem is negative. Yeah, it's the label that comes with the judgment. Like, right. oh, like I've judged this, like I've discerned this about the situation and now I'm going to decide, is that good or bad? Mm-hmm. Instead of this, like, this is option A and this is option B. And they're both still neutral, but I would prefer this one. I think that's going to be most effective for me. Yeah. But I would say we have assigned morality to most things that have none, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. I mean, clothing, um, socioeconomic status, your things that are available to you or not available to you. How, what is that? Like your job um, where, I mean, let's not though get into like, here's my judgment um like definitely if you are the high powered person in charge of a very large company and you are like on your 37th private jet and the people that are making your company run on the daily can't earn a living wage that mm-hmm. to me smacks into the morality but space. that's not about judgment that's more but about that's, just here's a moral issue that i correct <laughs> like, correct so yeah um like and that's different I think because that's more about the system yeah right? like, I'm not saying that you're a terrible person because I don't know you I'm saying the situation right. is systemic in our communities and it's not right like morally correct. speaking it is not correct yeah on what we understand as a functioning society for people yeah yeah okay let's try and get one more like <laughs> before we're before we're before they kick favorite us out job oh my god got it my favorite job like other than the one that I have now which like obviously I enjoy my favorite job that I've ever had was working in the seniors department um at the Bob Rommel Center for the Deaf Mm -hmm. loved it like they were just the nicest people the stories that they would tell you like it was just incredible like and they all grew up together at the Milton School for the Deaf which was like down the road um so they all have like they had like grudges and they had like all these like cliques and stuff that formed in like kindergarten like there was one there were two people who would not talk to each other you couldn't sit them beside each other because they would just like have at it there was like a crayon involved in the kindergarten and this grudge just grew up with them it's insanity um but they were so kind and so loving and I was there and I had a bunch of jobs that I had to complete in order to because I was there for my um placement for social work so like I had to complete really specific things and they needed them to come along to do the things and they were so nice we started a billiards club we started like a reminiscence group together we did this crazy craft I still have it um where I like hung up sheets on the wall and they signed every letter of the alphabet for me and we put together words um that represented what the center felt like for them because they were residents they lived there all the time um and they still have this scrapbook of all of their words describing what it was like in their own hands um and I just like I could not get enough of it I was so happy there the entire time I was there that my sign name is literally like for a smile <laughs> just, like, clearly hadn't hit my major depressive episode yet <laughs> right on the cusp <laughs> But like they used to play games with me all the time because I was so tired all the time because it was almost two full hours to get there and then get back. And then I was doing a full day of work in between. And so they would play bingo. Like there was an outside club that would come in. They had like the rolling machine um, and they would play bingo. And my job was just to like make sure that if anybody needed anything, we had one um, sort of client who was deaf and blind. And so my job would be to like tell him what was on his board so he could memorize it and then let him know kind of what was happening. Um, and a whole bunch of times, especially when I was getting used to working there, I would like nod off during the bingo game and they thought it was the funniest thing ever. And they would slam the lid of the thing. And I'd be like, (gasps) (laughs) speaking of noises that you don't like, that was like a ripper every time I was like, oh my God. And they would laugh and laugh and laugh and be like, oh, sorry. Did we make a noise? (laughs) They were like cranking it on the thing. Um, and there was one lady there who like, I just absolutely adored. 
and she was like kind of getting there in age um and she got very worried that people were pretending to be deaf around her Mm -hmm. um and I don't know why I love this memory so much but it's her like sitting along everybody with the bingo table and she'd cover her mouth and because she was oral um and so she'd cover her mouth and go can you hear me (laughs) can you hear me and you you have to be like yeah like I'm hearing I can hear you (laughs) everyone else is deaf but I can definitely hear you (laughs) that's my favorite thing in the whole world like I loved her so much and she was so nice but she would get really worried every once in a while that everyone was pretending um yeah it was just like that is my favorite place like if I could go and like it was really hard for me because again I was like early 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 20s (laughs) like um and because it was a senior's home like occasionally people would pass um and I was not used to that and so they would come in and I would kind of fall apart um, and so I was like, I feel like that's probably not appropriate. And so I kind of like moved on, but all the time I'm like, oh, I wish I would have stayed. Like, I wish there would have been a job for me. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't at the time, like I got a job downstairs, like in the day program for, um, like adults with developmental disabilities, but it was not the same. Like my heart is always for seniors. Like if I could like be like, oh honey, you need, like, if we're going to do a do-over, like if I could go back in time, I'd be like, wait, like just wait six months, a job opens up here. Like you're going to want it. <laughs> like, oh kick myself but yeah favorite job ever love um that's really hard because I'm gonna be honest that I've never really had a job that I hated Mm -hmm. um in hindsight uh the very first because I've worked at a lot of golf courses which is like one of my favorite places to be um and so life can't really be bad like while you're there um toward the end of working at the golf course at my very first job things were hard because I had a particular co-worker that was similar age to me that was maybe not as honest and like And, um, in the end, after all of the things I had done for the person in charge, um, that owned part of the golf course and resort, um, she literally just lied, bold face lied about me. And, um, I didn't really get asked to leave, but I didn't get asked to come back the next summer. And what's really funny is that the, the co-owner that ran the resort portion, like, immediately I mean the end of day didn't even happen and he was like can you please come work here for me next summer because he and his family had known me since I was in second grade and they knew that it was all bullshit and that like shenanigans were going down and really that the person that owned the golf course portion if we want to talk about morality um but uh when, when he left, the, the whole place got sold to somebody who had bought it, man. Okay. It, this really makes me sound like I just hate anything Christian. And this is like, not remotely the case, but I, I mean, it's a real thing to have church trauma. Um, but they sold it to somebody who bought the place to have like a retreat center Mm -hmm. from New York city, because we were just like an hour and a half outside of the city. And, um, they ran it as a resort hotel for like the first year or so that they were there because they needed to keep the biz, like they needed to have business. So like in between the things they would do these retreats, And that is probably the very worst job I have ever had in my whole life, which sucked because I loved the people. I knew all the old guys from down at the golf course that I was serving every night, but they would bring these like young adult, high school, middle school kids in from the city that were all from this one particular church. And I have never dealt with such hateful, nasty people. And I mean, as somebody who attends church and then goes out to lunch I am never so disgusted and angry and annoyed as I am to watch people who literally just sat through an hour to two hours of how we're supposed to 
how you're supposed to act right, who can't like not be a dick. And so um, he did things like steal our tips from weddings that we did. Oh, wow. He still owes me about $1,400. Like Vanity. I will never see it. Um, and yeah, just gross, gross, gross. Like, so lack of integrity. Actually, no, you know what? That literally is my, the worst job I ever had. The rest of the things that I've done, I've really mostly enjoyed because yeah. it's been, it's either been golf courses, uh, which I will be at under any circumstance. And, um, I mean, being in the fitness industry is difficult, but a lot of my time then was at gyms, which I actually just do like the atmosphere of being at a gym, depending on what it is. And I've had, you know, good and bad bosses, but I think I really have mostly enjoyed a lot of the things that I, I've done. Um, I think maybe the place where I taught all of my first water classes, like that, just, it was all old ladies. They all had to talk about getting advice all the time. Like they all had stuff that people would get into fights because somebody had just had their hair done and somebody was splashy. Um, they would just literally stop what they were doing. Look at me and be like, I'm too old to do things. I don't like, I'm not doing that. Like, I it's mean, the opposite senior experience to me. <laughs> dead, dead, like just dead in your eyes. Like, nope like not in an unkind way they were just like Rachel I am 88 and I do not have enough time left to fill my life with things I don't enjoy I will not be doing <laughs> um I should go in the good advice column which is right? <laughs> I mean really um that one I'm taking to heart more quickly than the other one I'm finally getting my shit together with that one um but they were just the most fun group but same thing people passed and things like that and it's odd now for me to think like how many years ago that was and the fact that like none of them are probably still walking the earth and that's very odd but man give me give me a senior citizen personality every day of the week I give me the person that is the most obnoxious to deal with I just they earned it is all I have to say. I'm sorry. Like you don't even have to have done anything good in your life. If you have simply survived to a certain point, yeah. you go ahead and say what you want. Like, yeah, I like your grit friend. <laughs> that's probably how they got there. They probably didn't take people. <laughs> um. Anyway, I think that's the end, Amy. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. I love you. Bye.